Have you ever felt like someone was watching over you, even after they were gone? In this chilling true story, one of our viewers shares how her best friend's ghost came back to save her life. Get ready for a tale that will send shivers down your spine and make you question the boundaries between life and death. I am a young woman of Indian descent. My best friend's name was Mitchell. We were friends because we never judged each other. We had known each other for years and never had a fight since we met. Unfortunately, my best friend passed away in a severe accident. I was inconsolable and devastated by this heartbreaking loss, but I had to continue with my life, knowing that Mitchell would have wanted that for me. He always told me not to give up and to pursue my dreams, and that's what I planned to do. I cried terribly during the funeral. I couldn't imagine life without his radiant smile and supportive words, but I had to stay strong. After the funeral, I went home, and it suddenly started raining and thundering excessively. I was living with my aunt during that period. While it was storming outside, I was watching TV, and my aunt asked me to go to the store to buy some things for her. Yes, auntie, I'll go right away. I said hesitantly, because I suddenly didn't feel well. A severe nausea rising. Suddenly, I wanted to throw up, so I ran to the toilet to vomit. I heard my aunt calling again, asking if I was still going to the store because she had left the money and shopping list on the table for me. Yes, auntie, I'm coming. I'll still go to the store. After vomiting and brushing my teeth, I went outside to take my slippers. But then, I saw a pair of feet under the bench, where the slippers and shoes were neatly arranged. I saw no body or anything else, just the feet under the bench. The two feet had red sneakers on, and I saw the bottom of red pants sticking out above the sneakers. I immediately got goosebumps all over my body. It made me think of my best friend, because he was also dressed entirely in red during his funeral. Was it him? Why was he showing himself to me now? Meanwhile, the rain got worse, lightning and thunder, as if a storm was coming in Suriname. I looked at the sky, the lightning bolts shooting one after another. When I looked back at the bench, the feet were gone. I grabbed the large umbrella my aunt had left for me by the front door and ran out into the waterlogged yard. I stood by a utility pole near our house, waiting for the bus. I had my headphones on and was listening to music. But suddenly, I heard a very clear voice say, Ashi, watch out. I was startled and automatically looked around me. But I saw no one and began to doubt myself if I had heard correctly. The voice sounded like my deceased best friend. Later, I heard his voice again. Ashi, watch out. And this time, it came so unexpectedly and loudly that my mobile phone fell out of my hand in shock. It fell onto the muddy, wet ground. Luckily, my screen didn't break because the way I dropped the phone was not pretty. I wonder where this voice is coming from. I'm scared to death. I'll just go home. I won't go to the store anymore because I don't see the bus coming. And this rain is getting worse and worse, I said to myself. When I turned to go back home, I heard the voice again, urgently saying, Ashi, watch out. I didn't know what to do with it and stood hesitantly by the utility pole for another 10 minutes. Despite having an umbrella, I was soaked because the rain was relentless. It was blowing terribly, the rain going in all directions, and it wasn't nice. 
It looked a bit like a scene from a horror movie with how bad the weather was. Suddenly, lightning struck the utility pole right next to me. I heard a loud bang, as if something exploded. It all happened so fast, and before I could react, I saw an electric wire snap and swing towards me. I must admit, I saw my life flash before my eyes. This is the end. I'm gonna die. I can't escape this, was my last thought. In shock and fear, I couldn't run or flee from the power cable. Suddenly, I felt two ice-cold hands grab me swiftly and roughly pull me away. I saw the cables fall exactly where I had been standing. I got chills all over my body seeing this. I could have died, and it would have been in a very cruel way. This thought shot through my head, and simultaneously, I wondered who had saved me and who had pulled me away from that spot. I quickly looked around, but saw no one. I ran home with trembling hands and legs. My aunt had heard the loud bang because the utility pole where I was standing was not far from our house. She was already looking out the window, nervously waiting for me to return from the store. My aunt saw me coming and immediately came to meet me, asking if everything was okay. I nodded and said everything was fine, but that I didn't go to the store because no buses were running. I didn't tell her what had happened to me. I don't know why, but maybe because I didn't understand it myself and didn't want her to think I was crazy. I took a bath and wanted to watch TV afterward. I took off my clothes, stood under the shower for a while, and just before I was about to put on my clothes, I saw my best friend's name written on the foggy mirror. I was scared to death because I had been worrying about the incident by the utility pole the whole time. Was it my best friend who kept warning me? Had he pulled me away from the pole? Was that why he was urging me to be careful? And now I stepped out of the bath and suddenly saw his name on the mirror. This can't be a coincidence. He was clearly the one who had saved me from death. I got goosebumps all over my body. I called for my aunt to come and see, but she didn't hear me. I quickly put on my clothes and hurried to my aunt. This time, I wanted to tell her what had happened to me because I was starting to get a bit scared. But just as I stepped out of the bathroom, I felt a warm sensation in my underwear. I opened my underwear and looked inside. Shit. I saw a huge clot of blood in my white underwear. I had gotten my period. Strange. Why now? I shouldn't be getting my period yet, but here it was. I was really annoyed because I had just taken a bath. My aunt asked me what was wrong because I looked so confused. I suddenly got my period and I don't understand it. It's not my time of the month yet, I said. My aunt went to the bedroom and gave me a sanitary pad. Go clean yourself up, girl. It's not such a big deal. Sometimes these things just happen suddenly, she said. I went back to the bathroom to wash myself because it smelled raw and I didn't feel clean anymore. While I was busy washing between my legs and putting on clothes, I suddenly saw my best friend standing there. What an inconvenient moment, and how dare you, I thought. At the same time, adrenaline shot through my body, realizing that this was just a ghost. I can't explain it, because so many thoughts shot through my head. In short, I was shaking and trembling like crazy. I wanted to scream and run, because I wasn't planning to stay in one small space with a ghost. He seemed to look at me amused. He didn't speak because I didn't see his mouth move, but he spoke to me. It was telepathic because I heard his voice in my head saying something like, don't be afraid girl, 
I won't do anything to you. I just want to say goodbye and let you know that I greatly valued our friendship. I will always watch over you and try to protect you where I can. You won't see me anymore, but that doesn't mean I'm not there. Take good care of yourself. Then he disappeared with a smile on his face. However, as I left the bathroom, something peculiar happened. The lights in the entire house began to flicker wildly. The TV turned on by itself, showing static, and the temperature dropped significantly, making the air feel thick and heavy. I could hear whispers, faint but unmistakable, echoing through the hallway. Panicked, I ran to my aunt to tell her everything, but she was nowhere to be found. The house was eerily silent, save for the low hum of static from the TV. As I stood in the living room, trying to gather my thoughts, the front door slowly creaked open. A cold breeze swept in, carrying with it the faint scent of roses, Mitchell's favorite flower. Suddenly, I felt a hand on my shoulder, firm yet gentle. I turned around slowly, expecting to see my aunt, but there was no one there. The whispers grew louder, forming words that sent chills down my spine. I am here, always. Then, as abruptly as it had started, everything returned to normal. The lights stabilized, the TV turned off, and the temperature rose to its usual warmth. My aunt entered the house, groceries in hand, looking at me with concern. Are you all right, dear? She asked, noticing my pale face. I nodded slowly, deciding to keep this final encounter to myself. Mitchell had made it clear. He was watching over me. From that day on, I felt a strange sense of comfort amidst the fear, knowing that my best friend was still there, protecting me in the shadows. But deep down, I also knew that his presence was a constant reminder of the fine line between our world and the unknown. And that line had just gotten a lot thinner 